Here's a question uh, about school choice. In, in a state like Arizona as well, and this is replicated throughout the country, if property values are based on perceived school values, which are based on tax rates and whatnot, and they're all, I mean, people don't want to risk uh, a major change in the school system if it's going to disrupt their property values, right? Right. So is that an issue? And if so, how do you work around it? Oh, it's that? absolutely an issue. Um, you have a lot of people, look, school choices, as, as Bayo likes to say, uh, school choice is widespread unless you're poor, right? So those of us with the funds to do so have carefully selected homes in, in high quality districts. And, um, and those of us who have done these things, I include myself in this category, um, ought not then to turn around and say, oh, well, I've got mine and it sucks to be you. However, that is a reality and there are people that do that. Um, the point is, is that parental choice does not threaten um, these people because actually what it'll do is make their already paid for choice, their school is more effective as well, right? So um, there's a lot of complacency uh, in sort of, you know, the leafy suburbs, but the fact is, is they're not competitive either, right? Even, even upper middle class uh, white America are, are not achieving at a level anything like, you know, say the top European and, and Asian system. So, um, you know, uh, the, the Pacific Research Foundation put out an excellent book called Not As Good As They Think, right? Where people are paying, you know, it was featured in Waiting for Superman, the movie. Um, people are paying, you know, million dollar uh, mortgages uh, and sending their kids to underperforming public schools. It's actually much more common than people think.